Okay, module 30, long-run implications of fiscal policy. And the main thing here we're going to talk about that's new is debt and deficit. Some of this is going to be a review of expansionary and fis uh, contractionary fiscal policy. So the budget balance. The budget balance is the difference between the government's tax revenue, what it brings in, and what it spends, both on goods and services as well as transfer payments. Ideally, the government would like to uh, spend money that it's collecting through tax revenue. But this does not always happen, which leads to deficits. Um, and sort of that's what we're going to talk about with this entire um, unit. So, expansionary fiscal policy. There's three things the government does during expansionary fiscal policy. We've talked, you know, we mainly talk about two of them. Uh, the first is cutting taxes, lowering taxes. The second is increasing transfer payments, which is essentially increasing government spending. And then last is increasing government spending on goods and services. Okay? So when these three things happen, they're done to uh, fix a recessionary gap. Okay? So what's the deal? Well, these are going to fix a recessionary gap by increasing aggregate demand. They should help to bring us out of recession. The problem is it's going to cause the budget to move towards deficit, okay? This is the problem with expansionary fiscal policy. While it helps a recession, it increases our national debt, all right? So expansionary fiscal policy, policy is either going to lead to a higher deficit or if the government was in a surplus, it's going to take away from that surplus, now let's look at inflationary gap. When we're in an inflationary gap, we use contractionary fiscal policy. Three tools, increasing taxes, decreasing transfer payments, which is basically lowering government spending, and of course, decreasing government spending. When this happens, again, that should decrease aggregate demand. It should help bring us out of that inflationary period. And it's going to cause the budget to move towards a surplus. So this is great if we're experiencing inflation because it adds to uh, money in our budget. Okay. But it's going to be bad if we are already in a recession or we don't want to decrease aggregate demand. So what is contractionary fiscal policy going to lead to in terms of debt and deficits? It's going to lower our deficit or it's going to increase our surplus, okay? Which is great unless we are in a recession. And this is sort of where the problem arises. So let's take a look at this. When the economy heads into a recession, let's look at what happens. Well, automatically, right? We talked about discretionary versus automatic. Automatically, tax revenues decline. People's incomes are going down. Business profits are going down. People are out of work, and so they're not paying as many taxes. So automatically, in a recession, tax revenues go down. All right, Transfer payments, like welfare, unemployment, those start to go up. As people lose their jobs, they struggle. Right, So automatically, these things happen without any um, policy uh, fixes from Congress. When the economy goes into inflation... Right? Tax revenues automatically start to rise. Right? People are working, businesses are doing well, and so they're paying more taxes automatically. And transfer payments, like welfare, begin to fall because less people are struggling. Right? So these things automatically happen, and uh, when the government doesn't do anything, right, these are the things that are just the economy is going to find itself working towards anyway. Okay, um, and so as I said, they happen without any deliberate fiscal policy, and the budget balance starts to adjust, right? Tax revenues rise, we move towards a surplus in an inflationary period, in a recessionary period, tax revenues fall, and we start to move towards a deficit. Okay, now, should the budget be balanced, right? You listen to people in Congress, and they say, absolutely, we can't run a debt, can't run deficits, you know, your family can't do it. And the thing is, the government is not like a family. And we'll talk a little bit more about this. 
right? Most economists say, no, we don't need a balanced budget, okay? Yes, we should be fiscally prudent, but do we need to spend every penny that we raise? No, that's not the case. So let's look. When the economy is in a recessionary gap, okay? Falling tax revenue, rising transfer payments, move the budget towards a deficit. How do we balance the deficit? Well, we would need to increase taxes or decrease government spending. Okay? Well, think about it. If we're increasing taxes during a recession or lowering spending, what's going to happen? The recession would get worse. And so this is what makes uh, it such a challenge for policymakers. Right? We want to balance the budget, but that's just going to plunge us deeper into a recession. Um, and you can look... Go back in recent history and see what's happened in our government um, during, the, during the recession. And then let's look at an inflationary gap. All right, what's happening during an inflationary gap? Well, we just talked about it. Tax revenues are going up. Transfer payments are going down. The budget is moving towards a surplus, right? How would we balance the surplus? Although most people would say a surplus is a pretty good thing, what would we do? Well, we decrease taxes and increase government spending. Well, if we did that, what's going to happen to the inflationary gap, right? It would make it worse, right? So a lot of people say, look, in times of a recession, that's when you spend. You get us out of the recession, then the economy is going to be okay. Then the government can back off. And then same thing during an inflationary period, right? Obviously, this is not what happens all the time. Uh, macroeconomics often doesn't find its way into policy. Crowding out. We've talked about crowding out. That's one of the problems with budget deficits. When the government runs a budget deficit and they need to deficit spend, they need to borrow money. This raises the real interest rate, which crowds out private investment. Okay. Now, a lot of people will say, well, look, the economy's in a recession. Anyway, people aren't so fast to invest. Uh, People aren't out spending, right? But if the real interest rate was lower, they still believe that private citizens would be the best to generate economic activity rather than the government. And then the other big problem with running a budget deficit is uh, by increasing the government's debt, this places financial pressure on future budgets, right? You've, you know, you've probably heard a million times, we're making our next generation pay for this, you know. And sometime down the line, we may need to address these things. We will need to address these things. But in the near term, most economists would agree that getting uh, the economy out of a recession is the should be the primary goal. So uh, you have a couple graphs here. Who does the government owe money to? Most people think it's China, and that's really not the case. Most of the money, as you can see, 42% is owed to ourselves in the, term, in the form of government bonds, Medicare, Medicaid, things like that. Um, if you look at China and Japan, right, those are only 7 6% respectively. So that's not where most of our money goes. Where is most of our money going? Social Security, defense programs, and health care. This is why there was such a push to work Obamacare uh, into policy because that was supposed to limit health care costs. Um, and so you can look and see 20% on defense and security, Medicare, Medicaid, 21%, Social Security, 20%, right? And so, you know, this becomes where, you know, if we had some nice debate in Congress, we can actually sit and talk about, hey, where should our money go? But because of the polarization, it's hard to get any real policy um, discussion going. And so finally, how can the government pay off the debt? Right? There's three ways. First, you can borrow. Right? It's not the best option. Um, it's like if you have a credit card debt and you say, oh, shoot, I need to pay this off. Let me get another credit card. Well, then that credit card goes in debt. And you just sort of work your way into this just kind of whirlpool of debt and deficit. Um, there have been nations that have declared bankruptcy. This is obviously not something the United States wants to do. The second option is increase taxes or cut spending. Again, this is probably the best thing to do, but 
it's not very successful. Okay, no one wants higher taxes. Um, you know, uh, you hear people talk about making the rich pay their fair share, but you know, politically, no one wants to go through that, or at least some people don't want to do that. But this is what's going to help us uh, mitigate this situation with increasing government debt. And then the other way is through the printing of money, meaning Fed increasing the money supply, putting money into the economy, okay? Macroeconomic theory has said this will lead to super high inflation. That hasn't happened yet, but that probably because we started from such a low uh, point. But this is something that policymakers need to keep an eye on. If the Fed keeps pumping money into the economy, we need to make sure that prices don't rise quickly. And I believe that is it for Module 30.